What is the essential principle of entrepreneurship? Well, the essential principle of entrepreneurship is that when a human being acts entrepreneurially, he or she discovers or creates an end. As I have said, in terms of economics, to discover is synonymous with to create. The actor values the end, and that is why he or she creates it, mobilizes the means, and undertakes an action comprised of stages to achieve that end. Though there is no guarantee, people have a tendency to achieve their ends. The reason we tend to accomplish what we set our minds to is obvious. Imagine I am lost in a storm at night, which is one of the most horrible situations to be in, and I can't see anything, and I have no compass. That is horrible. But if I suddenly stumble upon a compass that shows me the north, or between the crests of the waves I see the light of a distant lighthouse, then I leap into action. I focus all of my being on reaching the harbor. I tend to move in that direction. It's as if we had directional satellite dishes. If I suddenly detect an end worthwhile to me, for example, getting my degree in audiovisual sciences and becoming a successful screenwriter or film editor, etc., and I devote myself entirely to this end, then the information I gradually distill and create will be oriented toward this end, and I will find myself approaching it. Certainly, if I am lost and I have 360 degrees of possibilities for directing my actions, and I focus myself entirely on one point, I will tend to approach it. If I say to myself, what I want is to find the woman of my life and get married, and I'm going to devote all of my creative energy to this goal, then I will most likely find the woman of my life and get married. But if I say, ah, what do I want with women, then it's a lost cause. Do you see what I mean? Let's say I have a vision. I am Bill Gates. What I want is to find a product that will satisfy the needs of millions of human beings in the field of computers, and I end up developing an operating system. There is a tendency, but not a guarantee. There is no guarantee. We live in an environment of uncertainty. We might commit entrepreneurial errors, etc. But we move forward by trial and error. We may fail many times, but if we head straight for the harbor, the essential principle is that we will tend to reach the goal we set our minds to. Nevertheless, this principle has a peculiarity, and I explain it on pages 30 and 31. If, due to institutional factors, for example, the government or the caste system in India, etc., access to entrepreneurship is blocked in any area of society, then this law of tendency will be blocked. Entrepreneurs' creativity, their transmission of information, and the coordination that results will all be prevented in that area. And we will see that precisely to the extent that the state intervenes in the economy, in the areas in which it intervenes, and to the extent that this intervention is effective, the process of coordination is blocked, and continuous maladjustments and conflicts arise. In fact, all of the social conflicts you can name today are rooted in state intervention. Though it seems counterintuitive, when the state does not intervene, the spontaneous order in any area tends to systematically discover and coordinate maladjustments. So it is only institutional restrictions which block the law of tendency, the essential principle, according to which we tend to achieve what we set our minds to. If the postal service has a monopoly on delivering letters and private companies are not allowed to participate, then an enormous amount of entrepreneurial creativity which could be put into action in that area is blocked. At any rate, despite all of the legislation, entrepreneurial creativity emerges in a thousand forms and messengers appear, fax machines appear, and the internet appears, etc. and so on. Still, a curious thing happens and it illustrates the wisdom of the old Spanish maxim, Oyos que no ven, corazón que no siente, or out of sight, out of mind. Indeed, in those areas where the state applies its prohibitions, divisions, interventions and obstacles, to the extent that these measures are successful, and because they remove entrepreneurship from those areas, we will not even be aware of all that this entrepreneurial prevention of human action keeps us from creating. How much entrepreneurial creativity is lost because the state prohibits private ownership of the streets, a vast world, or because it prevents drugs from being freely produced and distributed, etc. An enormous entrepreneurial effort would be made to find less and less harmful drugs, 
ones that would be attractive to consumers but would have fewer harmful effects. All of that effort is blocked. Either it is blocked and all entrepreneurial spirit disappears, or an effort is made in a concealed way through the underground economy or the black market, etc. For a great many years in the Soviet Union and the surrounding region, photocopiers were banned. Why? because the authorities were afraid books would be written against the political regime and photocopied on a massive scale, subversive books from the authorities' point of view. So the students all had to take notes by hand, and they spent countless hours copying down their notes by hand in the Soviet Union, when in Europe one person would take notes and these would be quickly photocopied and distributed. Students in the Soviet Union were not aware of all that the environment they lived in kept them from creating. When people started smuggling in CDs, DVDs, etc., of movies and shows, I remember the most popular being the TV series Dallas. You were very small, but there was a character named JR who wore a huge cowboy hat. Anyway, when the Soviets began to watch smuggled movies, they came into contact for the first time with many details of the Western world. And from that point on, the regime's days were numbered, because until then, what was out of sight was out of mind. But once a person has seen something, he thinks about it. Hey, look what they have in the West. From then on, the end was in sight, and the regime collapsed because the Soviets had seen many things they were missing. That is why free trade is such a good policy for what we might call a closed country. Cuba, for instance, because where there is trade, people come into contact with and see the creative wealth of others. And they ask themselves, why shouldn't I have access to this? And, like others, be able to grow as a human being. People realize what they suffer when the dictatorial environment they live in blocks their very nature, their creativity. And that realization unleashes an extremely powerful, unstoppable force for freedom. E imparable hacia la libertad.